What do you think now is the direction of the force on my plus charge? Very far away. Excuse me? Why do you think it's to the left? Do you think minus one wins? So you really think the minus one is stronger than the plus three because the plus three would push it out and the minus one tries to lure it in, right, if the test charge is positive. Imagine you all the way to Mass Avenue. You think that this distance matters? Who thinks the force is in this direction? Who thinks it's in this direction? Very good. You've helped them, really. The force is obviously in that direction because if you're very far away, the field will be the same as if you just had a plus three and a minus one somewhere here, which is plus two. So if you're far away from a configuration like this, even if you're here or if you're there or if you're way there, clearly the field is like a plus two charge and falls off as one over r squared. So therefore, if you're far away, the force is in this direction. And now look what is very interesting. Here, if you're close to the minus one, the force is in this direction. Here, when you're very far away, maybe I should be all the way here, it's in that direction. So that means there must be somewhere here a point where the E field is zero. Because if the force is here in this direction, it ultimately turns over in that direction, there must be somewhere a point where E is zero, and that is part of your assignment. I want you to find that point for a particular charge configuration. So let's now go to some graphical representations of a situation which is actually plus three, minus one. Try to improve on the light situation. And let's see how these electric vectors, how they show up in the vicinity of these two charges. So here you see the plus three and the minus one, relative units. And let's take a look at this in some detail. First of all, the length of the arrows again indicates the strength. It gives you a feeling for the strength. It's not very quantitative, of course. And so let's first look at the plus three, which is very powerful. You see that these arrows all go away from the plus three, and when you're closer to the plus three, they are stronger, which is a representation of the inverse R square field. If you're very close to the minus one, uh, the arrows are pointing in towards the minus one, because the one over R square, the minus one wins. And so you see they're clearly going into the direction of the minus one. Well, if you're in between the plus and the minus on this line, always the E field will be pointing from the plus to the minus because the plus is pushing out and the minus is sucking in, so the two support each other. But now if you go very far away from this charge configuration, anywhere, but very far away, much farther than the distance between the two charges, so somewhere here or somewhere there or somewhere there or here, Notice that always the arrows are pointing away. And the reason is that plus three and minus one is as good as a plus two if you're very, very far away. But of course, when you're very close in, then the field configuration can be very, very complicated. But you see very clearly that these arrows are all pointing outwards. None of them come back to the minus one. None of them point to the minus one direction. And that's because the plus three is more powerful. And then there is here this point and only one point whereby the electric field is zero. If you put a positive test charge here, the minus will attract it, the plus will repel it, and therefore there comes a point where the two cancel each other exactly. Now there is another way of electric field representation which is more organized, and we call these field lines. So you see again the plus three, and you see there the minus one. If I release right here, or I place here a positive test charge, all I know is that the force will be tangential to the field lines. That is the meaning of these lines. 
So if I'm here, the force will be in this direction. If I put a positive chest charge here, the force will be in this direction. And of course, if it's a negative charge, the force flips over. So the meaning of the field lines are that it always tells you in which direction a charge experiences a force. A force, a positive charge always in the direction of the arrows, tangentially to the field lines, and a negative charge in the opposite direction. How many field lines are there in space? Well, of course, there are an infinite number. Just like these little arrows that we had before, we only sprinkled in a few. But of course, in every single point, there is an electric field, and so you can put in an infinite number of field lines, and that would make this uh, representation, of course, useless. So we always limit ourselves to a certain number. If you look very close to the minus one, notice that all the field lines come in on the minus one. We understand that, of course, because a positive charge would want to go to the minus one. If you're very close to the plus, then they all go away from the plus, because they're being repelled. You can sort of think as these field lines, if you want to imagine the configuration, that the plus charges blow out air, like a hair dryer, and that the minus suck in air, like a vacuum cleaner. And then you get a feeling for that is on the left side here this hair dryer which wants to blow out stuff, and then there is that little sucker that wants to suck something in, and it succeeds to some degree. It's not as powerful as the plus three though. Have we lost all information about field strengths? We had earlier with these arrows, we had the length of the arrow, the magnitude of the field was represented. Yeah, you have lost that, but there is still some information on field strength. If the lines are closer together, if the density of the lines is high, the electric field is stronger than when the density becomes low. So if you look, for instance, here, look how many lines there are per few millimeters. And when you go further out, these lines spread out. That tells you the E field is going down. The strength of the E field is going down. It's the one over R square field, of course. If you want to make these drawings, what you could do to make them look good, you can make three times more field lines going out from the plus in this case than return to the minus one. So the field lines are very powerful and we will often think in terms of electric fields and the line configurations and you will have several homework problems that deal with electric fields and with the electric field lines. If an electric field line is straight, so I have electric fields, get some red chalk. Say we have fields that are like this, straight E field lines, and I release a charge there, for instance a positive charge, then the positive charge would experience a force exactly in the same direction as the field line, because the tangential now is in the direction of the field line, it would become accelerated in this direction and it would always stay on the field lines. If I release it with zero speed, start to accelerate and it would stay on the field lines. In a similar way, if we think as the Earth as having a gravitational field, with 801 we may never have used that word gravitational field, but in physics we think of, the, of gravity also being a field. If I have here a piece of chalk, the um, the field lines, the gravitational field lines, here in 26100, nicely parallel and straight. And if I release this piece of chalk at zero speed, it will begin to move in the direction of the field lines and it will stay on the field lines. So now you can ask yourself the question, if I release a charge, will it always follow the field lines? And the answer is no, only in this very special case. But suppose now that the field lines are curved. So here are field lines, as you have seen in those configurations. It's very common. If now I release a, a charge in here, 